Hey everyone, I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro Max for about 6 months now as pretty much my main phone. Now, during that period I have tried a few other phones out to see what they're all about, but I keep coming back to this device. And in this video, I'll be talking about the things I like, the things I don't like, and the future of this device after this 6 month period. Let's chat. This video is sponsored by Versus.com, an international comparison platform that beautifully compares your favorite tech products and much more. They also have a stellar YouTube channel that brings these comparisons to life in a simple yet highly informative, exciting way. And they're hosting a massive giveaway of Apple, Google, and Samsung flagship phones right now. So check the link in the description for details on how to enter and give their site and channel a look today. Okay, so first up, let's talk about the design of this device. Now, without a doubt, it's one of the most beautiful phones you can still buy today. The combination of that frosted glass back, the stainless steel, and kind of the flat edges just really creates this beautiful looking device. I just love how this phone looks, and after six months, I'm not sick of it. It kind of harkens back to the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, and 5S, which have some of the most beautiful designs out of any of the iPhones ever released, and some of the most beautiful smartphone designs, period. And of course, this phone takes a lot of inspiration from those devices visually, and it is a good thing because I love it, I'm not sick of it. The phone also feels really great to hold as well. It is solid, it's premium, and the materials have held up extremely well. That frosted glass back looks brand new. The sides even, which are stainless steel and chromed out, are basically new as well. There's a couple scratches here and there on the edges, but not really as bad as a 12 Pro series, which during this six month period, it really scratched up a lot quicker than this device did. Maybe it's a new coating or something, but this phone has held up a lot better than the 12 Pro series somehow. I don't know. Now I did put a glass screen protector from dbrand on the front to protect that front display, but besides that, I've been using this phone carelessly, recklessly you could even say, and it still looks almost brand new. Beautiful. Now because of the material choice, the display size, and the battery capacity, this is definitely a big and heavy phone, something I've had to get used to over the last few months. Now I did of course use the 12 Pro Max, so I was very familiar with the overall form factor of this device, but this is somehow even heavier. And if you're switching from an older phone to this device, you're gonna have to get used to the overall amount of device you're getting here. But the size and weight of this device are worth it for a few reasons. First off, the size of this phone is because of that 6.7 inch display, which is 120 hertz, it's OLED, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it really is a gorgeous display for watching videos, editing photos, just daily usage, scrolling around, typing up emails. It's a great display size, and it also looks stellar as well. And of course at 120 hertz is a wonderful thing on this device that makes the already smooth iPhone experience even smoother and it's excellent. Scrolling is faster, pinching to zoom in looks great, playing some optimized games, it's a beautiful, brilliant experience. And I, like many people, were very worried about the battery performance with that 120 hertz display, but six months later I can safely say battery life on this device, even with 120 hertz, is great. So quick battery talk here while we're on this subject. This phone has a 4,352 milliamp hour battery, which is where some of that weight comes from that I mentioned earlier. And since I got this phone, it had pretty great battery life. And to this day, it's consistent. And in some ways, it's gotten a bit more optimized and better. I start most days at around seven o'clock in the morning and I end most days at around 11 o'clock in the evening. And I use my phone a lot for watching videos, listening to music and podcasts, typing up emails, typing up notes, shooting photos and videos, a mix of Wi-Fi and 5G, I really push my phone a lot throughout my day and it almost always can hold up and gets me through all the things I do. Now of course there are some days where I really push my phone's battery a lot for a short period of time, like maybe it's during a photo or video shoot, maybe I'm using 5G or maps a lot, and on those days I'll charge it mid-afternoon or if I'm going out in the evening I'll slap on a MagSafe battery pack just so I know I have battery for the rest of the evening. But pretty much on most days, full day of battery life, no stress, no worries, battery life is solid. And also, I know I mentioned plugging in the phone, but honestly, I think I've only plugged this phone in about 15, 20 times over the past six months. I almost always use the MagSafe charger at my desk, one I bring with me on the go, and MagSafe battery packs, that's it. That's why I charge the phone. Never really with a cable. The portless iPhone's coming, and I'm ready for it. <laughs> And also over the past six months, the performance and speed of this device has been very consistent and incredibly smooth. Performance is basically identical to day one with this device. It still feels brand new, incredibly quick, and I hate to say it, 
It's buttery smooth. With 120 hertz, iOS optimizations, the phone feels and is incredibly fast. Now there has been the occasional iOS software glitch here and there where the phone will freeze up for a second or it'll restart, but honestly that's happened maybe four or five times the entire six month period. Overall, performance, speed, fluidity, consistency, reliability, this phone kills it. Okay, last let's talk about the camera experience on this device. Now, I've used these cameras a lot for capturing photos and videos, day-to-day -day memories, and also for more professional use cases as well. And I gotta say, they're incredibly reliable, consistent, and an absolute joy to shoot with. I trust and rely on these cameras for a lot of my work and also for just capturing day-to-day -day moments that I don't want to forget. And so far, no complaints. This camera setup is incredibly versatile with that main ultra-wide and telephoto camera, all working together to create a very consistent excellent experience. The colors, sharpness, dynamic range, shots on all these cameras look beautiful. It's consistent, almost perfect every single time, and it's really hard to get a bad shot or even a mediocre shot than to get an incredible or excellent shot. These cameras always kill it. However, the weakest camera here is definitely the three times telephoto zoom camera, and I almost wish that Apple stuck with the two and a half or two times zoom from the previous iPhones. The camera just doesn't perform that well in low light, it's slow, and even the iPhone defaults to the main camera first in most cases, even outside, before it defaults to the telephoto camera. It does take some great shots, but it's just not an amazing experience. Now this is a whole discussion you don't want to get into with me because I'm just not really a fan of these five times, 10 times, and even this three times telephoto zoom is just too much for the type of shots I take. But it is what it is. What really makes up for that though is the incredible 4K video recording on this device. It is, and I'm gonna say it, the best video recording on any smartphone you can buy today, 100%. Videos are sharp and detailed, smooth and stable. It is really unbelievable how smooth the stabilization is on this device while still looking natural. And videos look good in all conditions. Day or night, you're gonna get some great shots. Colors are beautiful, audio quality is crisp and clear. It's really everything you could want from a phone for video recording, for capturing day-to-day -day memories, or for even more pro use cases like shooting short films or YouTube videos. This phone is a dream for video recording. This device just somehow always nails it. It's almost impossible how good the video quality is on this phone. It's wonderful. Okay, to conclude, with the iPhone 13 Pro Max six months later, it is still an incredible device. Day one, incredible. Six months later, incredible. Probably a full year, still gonna be amazing. And even two years from now, three years from now, it's still gonna be a stellar device. So if you're looking for a phone that's gonna last long term and still be great months and years from now, this device is definitely a great choice. It's just a super reliable and consistent device that nails on the most important parts of the smartphone experience. The design is beautiful and is held up extremely well. The display is absolutely gorgeous. The performance and battery life are consistent and reliable. And the camera experience here is one of the best on any device you can buy today. Six months later, I still really love using this iPhone. Very few complaints, mostly positives, and the experience so far has been stellar. Apple killed it here. And that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this device. If you bought this phone a month ago, two months ago, or even six months ago like me, what's your experience been like so far? Let me know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.